Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Greetings. Welcome. Here we are. Yes. I am Katie Petrick, joined by the David Fiorazzo. Happy Wednesday. How are you doing today? Good. Feeling good? Good, good. Yes. Getting ready to rock this and can't really? wait for the Babylon Bee today, too. Oh, yes. Well, we'll get to that. But uh, when I read this headline, uh -oh. I was like, oh, David's going to have a field day. But we'll get to it in just a moment <sighs> because the University of Chicago is launching a new course this fall and it's entitled <clears throat> Queering God. Students will focus on queer, Jewish, Christian, and Islamic theologies. David, any thoughts? Well, the very first three words in this article, is God queer? I'm going to stop right there and see, are you biblically illiterate or are you literate at all? Uh, do you live? Were you born? Who created you? How did you get here? Is God queer? Um, okay, University of Chicago, so there you go. Um, religious studies course is going to examine God as an ally in queer world making. So basically throw out the Bible and uh, let's get it. Pull up that picture of the recent PhD recipient, Olivia Bastion. Is that pink or purple there she's got in her hair, Katie? It might be a fade out. It okay. might have been a deeper pink, but she okay. you know, needed to get it dyed again. So she's, she's playing the part there, and she looks like, of course, she's 25 or whatever. Anyway, so she's going to be the um, teacher of the class this fall. Um, she previously authored a dissertation called Queering the City of God. W. H. Auden's later poetry and the ethics of friendship. Um, I have no mm. idea what most of that means, but it's pretty wordy. Uh, but I guess it, it doesn't, has to doesn't be. Matter. Have you, it, in case you haven't learned, um, in order to write a thesis, dissertation, whatever, all of it, it has to be like six words, and then they have to have a colon, and then they have like another six or seven words. It's just the titles have to be like three lines long, just because that's just that's just how they do it. Otherwise, you can't graduate. Oh, okay. Did you not know that? Oh, no, yeah. I didn't. But, uh, I, but uh, I learned something new every day. That's why this go. is called Educated. <laughs> and I even learned from the host of the show, Katie Petrick. We're co-hosts. Okay, David. I know. I just wanted to prop you up there for that. I because I'm so you a short. Compliment. Yes. Thanks. Prop you up because, no, I didn't. It wasn't size. a reference to your height. But let's go back to Olivia. She, we will analyze the ways that contemporary artists, activists, and scholars are using theology Stop right there. You're not, <laughs> you're not using theology. You are abusing theology, and you're abusing the truth, abandoning the truth, rejecting God to come up with your theory here. So anyway, back to the quote. Um, using theology to reimagine gender. There it is. That's what you're doing. Forget your, your, your throw out to uh, you, you tossed a little bone to theology. No, sorry. You just want to reimagine gender and experiment with new relational forms, the course description states. Our readings will include a variety of genres, <laughs> memoir, letters, scriptural interpretations, and a novel. I just want to add that when you're, when they, these people, we can look at this in a minute, when they're interpreting scripture they are completely off and illogical and unbiblical in their interpretations it'd be so interesting if because i'm guessing this will be a small class it's not like this will <laughs> be a pit class of 300 but if it was like an open class where you could find out where the room is and just go sit there and listen when she does her, her scriptural interpretation if you had a bunch of apologists just scattered throughout the room <laughs> and see what happens but the simple fact that it's Focusing on queer Jewish, Christian, and Islamic theologies. Now you can beat up all you want on the Jews and the Christians. Yeah. Right? This is this, this is what we do. Uh oh. But the yeah. Islamic theologies, as it says, I wonder what's going to happen. Yeah. I wonder who's going to actually put up a fight against having this course go forward. Yeah, I don't think uh, Muslims who are practicing. Muslims, in, in, as far as Islam goes, and what the Quran teaches, I don't think they're as tolerant of the LGBTQ and the abuse of 
faith, religion, God, and there it's a very different God, but nonetheless, uh, it's, it's an interesting point you make. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But again, here, we've got to use the air quotes again around interpretation, scriptural interpretation. So this is, uh, you know, it's not surprising, goes with the territory again, University of Chicago, but uh, the university works to foster an inclusive climate mm. on campus, so all may participate fully in the distinctive open and questioning environment that always defined the University of Chicago. Yeah, well, we're going to see. I, I have a feeling this course will not run now that there's been some attention drawn to it. Back in December of 2021, Campus Reform actually reported that a University of Chicago critical race theory course, the uh, problem of whiteness, as it was called, uh, it was delayed two months because of the backlash that it faced. Well, it was delayed, but does that mean it just... Well, I don't... They need, had the course? Correct. This is a good question. I don't know <laughs> in what capacity the course actually happened. It was delayed. So I think maybe it'll run at some point, but I don't think it's going to start right away this not. fall. So even though you're hoping to get your little credits in this course, have a backup, which basically means any other course. <laughs> We'd probably do you better. So yeah. there's... I think there's uh, we need... I, I miss the professors that actually, you know, studied and, and um, anyway, mm, I'm not yes. saying that Olivia didn't study because she, apparently she's got a PhD. Oh, that means um, absolutely nothing. Okay. Okay. Just wanted just to. Just going to put it uh, out there. Just want to make sure. That means nothing. All right. But still to come, a Massachusetts teachers union is throwing its weight behind a measure that would eliminate standardized testing for all high school seniors. We'll talk about that next. Interesting. Yes. Interesting yes. is this next story. Uh-huh. Testing, go, testing. Yes, we're talking about testing. It could go either way. The Massachusetts Teachers Association, MTA, Board of Directors, voted unanimously to throw its weight behind a ballot measure to end standardized testing currently required for students to graduate. What's your initial reaction? Okay, you probably have one. You got it there? Okay. okay. Let's continue. Ahead of the board of directors vote, the MTA submitted a ballot question to the state's attorney general's office for the 2024 election, which would eliminate the requirement that students pass the Massachusetts Comprehensive Assessment System, MCAS, uh, a test on English, math, and science in order to graduate. All right. So English, math, and science, they would need to pass to graduate. Instead, students would be able to graduate if they complete coursework that meets the state's academic standards. Let's take a look at what they're talking about. There's one test in Massachusetts every public school student must pass to graduate high school. The Massachusetts Comprehensive Assessment System Test, otherwise known as the MCAS, is a lengthy exam teachers prepare their classrooms to take. It was like a rough week every time we had to do it. Reva Finley Call teaches in Massachusetts. Working at a school and seeing my students struggle for, um, you get anxious because it's a big thing and like you have to pass it to pass school. Even as a student, I hated standardized testing. On Sunday, just weeks away from the start of school, the Massachusetts Teachers Association voted to support a November ballot question that could change MCAS requirements. We are a union that com is committed to fixing a key part of what's uh, wrong in public schools, that is this over-reliance on high stakes testing. Max Page is the president of the Massachusetts Teachers Association. What students will be judged on is the curriculum uh, successfully passing the curriculum that shows they have mastered our state standard. Okay. I don't so, believe the guy, but that's just me. I'm skeptical. <laughs> okay. So here's, here's my two cents on it. I'm split because should kids be fo so focused on having to pass these standardized tests and be, you know, teach to the test and study and study and study just for a test? No. Because then they're not thinking critically. They're not right. able to just go through and enjoy uh, what they're learning. However, if you eliminate any sort of basically accountability on a higher level than is what is at the district by these teachers who may have political agendas and be pushing onto their kids, if they aren't held accountable at all, how do we know these kids are learning anything at all? 
These, I mean, these teachers could take the entire school year to talk about only whatever they want to talk about and then just pass the kids along. I'm not saying they're going to do this, but it, 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 based on what they're saying, yeah. they would complete, they could graduate if they complete coursework. What are the state's academic standards? How are you determining that if not for using some sort of a, a measure such as this test? Now, I'm not for or against standardized testing in that sense. I just want to know what where's the accountability hmm. to know that they are actually learning Ooh. and not spending the entire school year on Massachusetts, Ooh. which tends to be quite political. So you use the word accountability, and yeah. you're talking about teachers and unions and educators. I, ooh, careful, yes. careful, Katie. Yes, I know. I want to I go know. back. Um, I would love to have heard him explain. Max Page, the MTA president, we are a union that is committed to fixing a key part of what's wrong in public schools. I don't believe he has a clue what's wrong in public schools or they would have key made part. efforts to fix them all these years. He looks like he's been at it for a while. He's got the gray there. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like he's been doing this for a few decades, maybe. But it, No, you're not committed to fixing what's wrong in public schools because you don't think what's wrong is wrong. You're looking at something else. Well, they're looking at testing. Yeah, and going along with the, you know, what that teacher said, it's that social emotional learning component SEL. of oh, I'm we're anxious. We see the anxiety in the students, and and I'm anxious as a teacher, and I was as a student, and I'm not a good test taker, and I could be sick that week. Or da -da 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 -da. again, we are a generation so focused on our anxiety levels and yep. knowing how we feel and all that, but we don't take anything to actually correct it to try and make it better. We just yeah. You have to give me everything, and I, I'm the victim here, so just accommodate to me, not me. Recognize that I have, man, I get anxiety when I te take tests. What can I do to help alleviate that? No, no, no. What they do is say, well, we should just throw the baby with the bathwater. Go for it. That's what they're doing. And so I could I have never gotten with away with that, you know, <laughs> when I was in school oh, or my parents, yeah. you know, uh, this is a test. Just give me too much anxiety. Oh, it's, oh, okay. it's okay, little we Davey. We won't give we'll, you a test you can, today. Oh, you know what? We'll you, do you, we'll anything you want. We'll just pass you along. Go ahead. We'll let you graduate. No test necessary. Or it, oh, I, We have to submit something. So it's okay. Just go sit on your beanbag chair just, over there. Yeah, just put an X here in this box. And just put a thing. That's just fill in some bubbles, okay? <laughs> It'll be real fun. Don't you like filling in bubbles? They're fun. Yeah, yeah. And then you play with, well, we didn't have them back in the day, the fidget spinner thingy, pop a bubble, like all these coping <laughs> mechanisms for all this anxiety that these Safe spaces. kids have. Safe spaces. <sighs> all right. Well, anyway. Moving on. We, <laughs> the Massachusetts uh, Attorney General is still considering whether the MTA's proposed question will actually appear on the 2024 ballot. We'll see. They're now, the counter argument to what was going on was from Chris Anderson, who was the president of the Massachusetts High Technology Council, Ooh. who actually like has to think about things, okay. said this proposal of the elimination would jeopardize the futures of Massachusetts high school graduates, endanger the state's standing as a national leader in education, and put the state's economy at a further competitive disadvantage. Eliminating the statewide standard would do a disservice to all students, particularly students in underperforming districts and schools. Ooh, sounds like he thought this through maybe a little bit more than the other guy. He probably took a standardized test back when he was in school. Huh. Anyway, coming up, a new study finds that Americans support... They actually do support merit-based college admission practices. You see how this last story kind of ties into this next story? Interesting. Anyway, what does this all mean? We're going to break it down after the break. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on pristine quality bedding, towels, slippers, signature pillows, and much more when you use the code EDUCATED. That's E-D-U-C-A-T-E-D, -E EDUCATED. Support this show and a great American company. So Massachusetts may be wanting to, I guess, get rid of this standardized testing and accountability, if you will. Uh, but meanwhile, the rest of the nation is showing some support for actual merit-based, meaning, you know, you did something to get there. Uh, college admission practices. There was a recent intelligent.com survey that involved 1,095 American respondents and it revealed that about one in three Americans support the idea of college admissions taking an applicant's socioeconomic status into account. 
However, <laughs> okay, well, I was just talking about merit base. So what okay. are you saying, Katie? So if one third or 36% say, hey, socioeconomic status should be taken into, in account, into account, on the other side, those who do not believe that an applicant's socioeconomic status should be considered said the following. I believe admissions should be based on achievement and that for financial aid, yes, socioeconomic status should be considered, but admissions should be offered based on academic performance. A novel concept hmm. today. So you're telling yes. me in order to go to college, I should maybe have some sort of smarts up there and be able to yeah. hang with the rest of my classmates maybe in a lecture hall when we're discussing all the things that are on the TikTok, because that's what happens yeah. in lecture halls in a college. Anyway, uh, so on the actual question, do you agree or disagree that the race or economic status of an applicant should be considered in college admissions? It's quite interesting that they put race or economic status as being a combined question, because I do wonder how many people, mm. when they stop and break it down, I mean, you would think it would be like a hundred percent no race shouldn't matter but hmm, some people it might uh and economic status same thing so under the you know should uh race be considered i guess they kind of broke it down with the graph there they made it so race and they made it so economic status but the way they put the question makes it weird yeah um under strongly agree that uh race should be considered uh it's just under like well, well it's, I guess it's under 15%, maybe 13%. Um, but they say economic status a little bit more than that, just under 20% say strongly agree. But the main thing when you look at this graph is under the strongly disagree that race should be considered, you're looking at just under 60% say that race should be considered. And for economic status, they're saying just under 45% say that, hey, economic status. They strongly disagree that economic status should be taken into account. Interesting. I, I think I'm, I'm, I don't know why it's not 100% strongly disagree that race should be considered, but uh, it's the time we live in. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. You think, well, that's an overwhelming win. No, it's, it's just under 60%, as you pointed out. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's not really a, a so slam it, dunk. But I mean, it's the way they answered the question where they're saying, hey, yes, admission should be based on achievement, that they're actually giving that reasoning – uh, that it should be, it, instead of, oh, it should be, be based on the color of their skin, or it should be based on how much money they come in with. I, I like that at least most Americans, most, are saying, hey, achievement, merit, something. I agree. I agree. There you go. Do you agree or disagree, Katie, with a quota system for economically disadvantaged college applicants? Now, the way they, everything is in the way they... Word it. present the yeah. question you know there's strong biases always and it looks like they only had an n of 401 compared to the overall 1095 who took it so this question specifically didn't even get half of the respondents to i guess respond so take it for what you will the plus or minus on this one so we're all under 40 percent here i don't know if this one is statistically significant or not usually in a poll you you need more than 401 if you're <laughs> trying to trying to extrapolate it out to full data for like yeah. a country of 300 and you know 40 million but anyway i digress i always so like 400 the, people answered this one yeah i was like the not sure option or uh, I, I don't know it's always a safe not out sure. everything I don't know. is a safe out. don't ask me i don't know not sure i don't want to think about it other it used to be called <laughs> other, other. But other anyway under the do you agree or disagree with the quota system for economically disadvantaged college applicants i'm guessing quota system is what messed up the not sure kids they're like i don't know what that means anyway strongly <laughs> agree is just over what is that 30 30 right around 30 right around 30 yeah somewhat agree you're you're north of 35 percent okay so together that's like 60 probably 66 percent 65.5 yeah that's that's the math <laughs> if we're doing it based on what they were saying um it's interesting that just the way these people respond to things yeah. so eh, yeah it polls. is what it is don't believe the polls don't believe all of them but we'll see what happens now more importantly we have our latest babylon b headlines to discuss next 
If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. All right, before we wrap up the show for the day, let's take a look at everyone's favorite satire site, the Babylon Bee. Here are this week's top five Babylon Bee headlines. Five that Katie Petrick has not seen any of. We picked our favorite, and now you can help us decide which one should be named Queen of the Hive. We start with Democrats hire professional puppeteer to continue operating Diane Feinstein. Next, Weather Channel invites Biden for interview after hearing how much he loves to discuss the weather. Next, White House says Bidenomics so successful, the average American has twice as many jobs as they had two years ago. <laughs> Next, Oakland mayor asks residents to blow air horn once to announce stabbing twice for shooting. And finally, AI transformed into illiterate moron after just three hours watching CNN. <laughs> three, okay, come on. Katie, three hours? It took three hours? It took but three hours. Um, there are a couple I, really good ones. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I, I said if we didn't have a, something on Diane Feinstein based off of what happened. The puppet? With her the past week. The puppeteer. Louise. Professional um, puppeteer operating her. A lot she, of old Democrats, but there's a few old Republicans She turned too. over... Her power of attorney to her daughter. Mm -hmm. She has fallen. Yeah. She needs. She doesn't ask her answer much, many questions anymore. She doesn't know what is happening. You. Uh, yeah, I don't understand. You need to seed office at that point. Yeah. You need to let it go. In the words of Frozen, let it go. Yeah. I, I like the Oakland mayor uh, asking residents to blow the air horn. Well I think that's just good advice. Once to announce stabbing, twice for shooting. Uh, the implication, obviously, violence and violent crimes increasing in, in blue cities where they have defunded the police or uh, don't like the police or law enforcement. It's just, it's sad, but that's, you know, yeah, blow the air horn, once, once. stabbing, twice shooting, and then, you know, so everybody knows how the level of danger, I guess, I don't know. Basically, yeah, how to interpret, oh, I need to get away, or oh, it's just, just another day in their paradise, Ugh, or what they're calling boy, paradise. Yeah, yeah. Their, their utopia, their, their, uh, where law and order, order doesn't apply. They don't need that there, so. Seattle, Oakland, Portland. San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Anyway, that's going to wrap up our top headlines of the week. More satire next time, right, Katie? Oh, always. 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 We're going to rock the boat with more next time. Don't rock the boat, baby. All Don't right. tip if, the boat over. Uh, if you are a fan of this show, please, if you could, like, comment, share, subscribe. You know, it would help us. It, it, it would just help us. It really would. And it would mean the world to us. Now, for David and myself, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you for supporting this show. Until next time, stay educated.